as you move along in your mathematics career in education or uh, for some of you when you get out into the professional world, there's going to come a point where it's no longer going to be acceptable just to kind of write out your work on a piece of notebook paper. Uh, there's going to come a point where you, you need to start presenting your work in a professional format, in, in some kind of properly typeset electronic document. And Word here is definitely the most common uh, word processing application in, in business and industry. It has a lot of options to help you out with that. Right? So uh, the, the first thing it lets you do that is really important is uh, put things in italics. If you look at a mathematics, any mathematics textbook or mathematics article, uh, the first thing you, you should notice is that variables are always done in italics. For example, if I wanted to type y equals mx plus b, which is your basic linear equation, right? Um, that wouldn't be acceptable. The y, the m, the x, and the b all should be in italics. And of course, Word has a formatting feature that lets you do that. If you come up here, to the, to the font area and click on the I. Now I'm typing in italics. And you click on it again to turn it on and off. Now, that gets really old really quickly, having to constantly take my hand off of the keyboard, over to the mouse, off and back to the keyboard, off and back and forth. Uh, for, for anything that's even, even something small like this, that gets really tedious. Now, Fortunately, uh, you can't see me actually do this because you can't see what I'm typing, but Word does have keyboard commands that let you do that. If I type Control-I, that turns italics on. So I can type Control-I, Y. Then I'm going to type it again to turn italics off. Equals Control-I to turn it on, MX. Control-I plus, and I'm just turning it on and off real quickly right here from the keyboard. And that is a whole lot faster. Um, now, uh, I kind of the second most common thing that I think people need to do when they're typing math is is exponents, right? Anytime you're doing any kind of algebra work, you've got exponents and polynomials and so forth. And word again, there's two ways here. If I want to type uh, a quadratic equation, for example, I can go up here again. I'm in this font area, and there's a superscript button. If I click it once, it turns superscripts on, and if I click it again, it turns them back off. Now, again, that gets old pretty quickly, especially if you're doing you know, a larger polynomial. And fortunately, there's also a, a keyboard command for this as well. If you type Control, Shift, Plus, that turns superscripts on, and just like italics, we type it again, it turns them off. So I'm going to do, uh, if I just kind of talk you through it, if I do Control I, A, X, Control I to turn italics off, Control Shift Plus, I do my superscript, Control Shift Plus to turn it off, and I finish out my polynomial. So that there, I mean, if, if you're just doing geometry and algebra, that's going to cover a good 80, maybe 85% of uh, the stuff that you need to do. Um, now, there are some other things. You're occasionally going to need to do things uh, that are a little more sophisticated. And one, one way to just get some, some additional math symbols is I'm going to go to this insert area. And we've got this symbol option here. And if I click on that, see, it gives me a lot of additional math symbols. It gives me the not equals. Uh, it gives me less than or equal to. I've got plus or minus, uh, greater than or equal to, some basic math symbols, uh, some basic Greek letters, alpha and pi. Uh, we can get to a few more here. And this actually opens up the font, the, the symbol font, and you can scroll down here. So you've got the entire Greek alphabet here. Uh, these are the lowercase. These are the uppercase. Uh, you've got the, the tilde, some curly brackets, a bunch of other math symbols. Uh, some basic set theory symbols here. And it, it's kind of convenient. It remembers the last several ones that you use. So if there's stuff that you use uh, very commonly, 
you can get to them real quickly from this recently used section. Now, sometimes what you're going to need to do goes beyond just symbols. Sometimes you, you truly do need to do a, a more complex math expression. For example, a uh, first thing that leaps to mind, you might need to do a fraction. We often write fractions this way, right, just using the slash for division, but sometimes you need to make this into a true fraction with the one and the two on separate lines uh, with, a, with a bar between them. Uh, this is particularly true, for example, when you're talking about rational functions or rational expressions. So if you need to take that next step, uh, we, I'm going to stay here on this insert strip, and I'm going to go to the equation option. Right, so when I drop that down, the first thing it does is it tries to help me out. Right? It gives me a bunch of common math formulas, area of the circle from, uh, from geometry, Pythagorean theorem from geometry, some more complicated stuff in here, uh, the quadratic formula. Nice to be able to just click on that, which, which I'll go ahead and do here. Right? If I click on it, there you go. It inserts the equation right into my document. All right now... That's nice, you know, that, that's helpful, but sometimes, you know, you, you really are going to just need to go off and, and do your own thing. So to do that, I'm going to select this insert new equation option, and now I'm on my own, all right? If you look at what's happened here, I've gotten this whole new strip, and it, it starts off here with, with a bunch of these, you know, common symbols, and over here... This is really where the action is. All right, if I want to do a fraction, see, Word, Word has, what, nine different type, well, really four different types of fractions here. All right, I'm going to go with this one. Then I'm going to go up here into the top part. And I'm going uh, to, let's put, uh, let's put a polynomial up here. Let's put AX. And I want to stop right here before we go any further. And I want to point out what just happened, All right? I did not tell it to do that A and X in italics. I just typed A and X straight from the keyboard. This is one of the nice things about this equation editor. It understands basic formatting, like variables should be in italics. So it does it for you automatically. right? You don't need to worry about it. So now uh, I need, I'm going to go back to the design menu here, and I need to do an exponent. Now, you kind of just need to, Need to experiment here. Take a look around, browse through these, see what your options are. You see this e to the x, that makes me think exponents. So if I go to this one here, that is a superscript. I kind of messed myself up a little. It's gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to do my x over again. Put the x in there, delete that one, and there is my exponent plus bx plus c. All right now, let's go down here to the bottom. Right, and let's say uh, this isn't going to be a rational expression anymore. But let's say let's say I want to put a logarithm down here. So I'm going to start by typing logarithm L O, and you notice what it's doing so far, right? It's, it's put that L and O in italics because it thinks that I'm typing a variable. But watch what happens when I type the G. All right, as soon as I hit that parentheses. It says, ah, wait a minute, this is the log. When he said log, followed by parentheses, now he's talking about the logarithm function. So it fixed it because function names are, are in regular type, not italics. And it knew that. All right, so you can see how it's kind of helping me out here. So let's say log of x plus 1. And let's go back to the beginning and really make this a function. All right, I'll say r of x equals whoops, not minus, equals, and click outside here, and there's my function. Right? You see how uh, Word's equation editor is, is helping me out in a lot of ways, and it's giving me a lot of this exotic stuff that I need. Um, now, mostly get, getting getting used to it at this point is going to be a question of you're going in here and just browsing around a little bit. Uh, if you wanted to do a square root, well, that's a radical, so look under the radical option, and you see you've got it's got a, some defaults. It's got the square root and cube root because they're really common. It's got a regular square root. And it's got a, a, this radical where you can provide the index up here. And you, you, so you browse around here. It's got integrals, uh, larger operators, sums and products, different kinds of grouping symbols. 
it, it's got these sign functions. This, that's nice. You, you can type them in and it'll recognize them, or you can just pick them from the list. So when you need something, this covers an awful lot of, of the, the mathematical symbols you're going to encounter. So it really kind of is a question of just browsing around and finding what you need. Now, there is one other thing I, I want to talk about before we close out here. Um, is, is parentheses. These parentheses that I typed here, like for this logarithm and for this r of x, I just did those straight from the keyboard, right? And, and Word is fine with that. It'll, it'll go ahead and let, let you do your parentheses that way. But look at what happens here. If I wanted to put this whole expression in parentheses and I just go to the keyboard and I do parentheses, I get that. And that looks really pretty bad. All right, when, when you do parentheses around a large expression, you expect them to be large so that they really fit around, so that they, they scale with the expression they're containing. And the editor will actually let you do that. And I'm going to come all the way over here to the beginning, and I'm going to get rid of these ones that I put in. And I'm going to select the expression that I want to be in parentheses. Then I'm going to come up here to this bracket option. And you notice we've got parentheses right here. Now, if I pick parentheses from the menu, watch what happens, right? You see how Word, Word's editor said, ah, okay, the expression in them is big. They need to scale up so that they match and everything is consistent. So these, these are your, your three options for doing equations in, in Word. For basic stuff, you can just rely on italics and superscripts. Uh, there are some additional, if you, if you take it up kind of one level, this insert menu gives you a bunch of additional symbols that you can use. Uh, and kind of the, the ultimate, the final step, if you really need to go all the way and do your own custom things, you can select this equation option, go down to insert a new equation, then you know pick what you need from the menus and you really can build uh, full-scale equations using pretty much any mathematical symbol you're going to need.